today I'm making sourdough bread. This is how I make it. That there's rye grain for my own starter. I just whack a jar under there and I'll set my ground to just slightly coarser than medium. Switch her on. Lovely, lovely. That water out of the jug's sort of lukewarm. Stick about that much in. Well, I guess you could say if you're measuring it, that's about a quarter of a cup, but I'm not measuring stuff. But give it a mix in. I'm looking for a viscosity that sort of represents something like uh, yogurt. I could probably put a bit more water on that. Ah, no, she'll be right. We'll, we'll stick with that. The fire going through the winter it makes the whole room warm and helps that there to ferment. Because I'm not as relaxed as I might sound, I'm a bit of an impatient bastard, truth be known. I stick a little bit of honey in there. Because sugar helps stuff for me. You don't have to, but it just speeds the process up a bit. You can also put some pineapple juice. I'm looking at that now and I'm thinking it's still a little bit too dry. I want to add a bit more water. Rightio, pop a lid on that. Okay, that's a couple of days later. So this time I'm using rolled oats that are actually uh, quite coarse, because I can. These guys I'm doing quite fine. I've got my grind around here now. And that'll do a good feed for the uh, starter. I'm going to do about four of these in here. That's a pretty big one. There's two, three, and four. The normal way when you do this is you're supposed to take two spoons out and put four in and put your other two into a container that you can use for pancakes or chicken feed. I don't do that. I just keep putting four in and more water and then eventually I end up with a second jar, a third jar and a fourth jar. Smack more water into that. I've mixed it in with my water and I've started a second jar. That's as far as I'm going to go because this is all stirred down. As the day goes on it's going to come right up to about there and sometimes it will even go over the top. This one here will start and keep on going and we'll do that. We've got four jars and we'll make our bread. This is not the traditional way to make sourdough bread. It's just the way that I make it. It works really good for me because I like to make a really heavy loaf and I like to have things really whole. I don't like to process stuff too much. I like to have big chunks of grain and wheat. And if you're a person that's intolerant to wheat, you could do all this with brown rice and you basically have a gluten-free sourdough bread. And that's totally doable as well. But I'm not, I have no problem with gluten. And I'll throw all sorts of stuff in that down the track when we start making the bread. This is whole rye kibble. This is my sourdough fermenting in the jars. You can see the little bubbles. Supposedly there's a real mass to this and you're supposed to the exact amount. This is warm water I'm putting in there. However, after making it for a while, what I have learnt is that it's more about how it feels and looks than the exact amount. That's just me. Don't go on my word. I've been brewing these for a few days. Going to put them all into this mixing bowl. If you're not getting bubbles like that, then it's just not fermenting properly. Oh, it looks good. It smells very, very sour. That's uh, reasonably warm, not too warm. Hold over the sink. She looks pretty good, eh? Oh, this is all that gas coming out. Then pour all of the liquid into the next one. Do as much out as we can of our leftovers. It's pretty clean. Lid on and repeat with the next jar. So we do that through all the jars. So we get them nice and clean as much as we can, but also we don't waste any of our sourdough inside it. Now our third jar, after we get a good shake, that's what we've got inside it. And my fourth jar, you can see I've left a little bit of, just a little bit of sourdough down there. So you're going to tip a wee bit of this in. Not much, about so much. Lid on. And give this guy a bloody good shake because he's thick. He's different. He's going to be my next starter. Oh, got to really shake the hell of that. Tristan's cleaning chicken eggs this morning. In my mill, I've got a mixture of rolled oats and wheat. I'm putting this straight into my new starter. That's about four large tablespoons in there. I keep the starter in my bedroom because it's the warmest room in the house. And I just put the lid on top loosely so the air can get in and it'll keep fermenting. Gonna smack that into my bowl, like so. Give it a good stir. 
so it's all like mixed in. I'll leave this in the front window of my bedroom because it's warm, put tea towel over top and come back to it at night. It will continue to ferment until I come home tonight and then I'll add some stuff to it and we'll make some bread. It's the evening time and this is what my sourdough is looking like now. It's risen a bit and it's also got some more bubbles in it just the way we want it. So it's still working in there. It's quite, yeah, quite uh, aerated. Into that. If I was making flatbread with sourdough, I'd leave it like that. Because I want it to rise, I use this stuff here. For every cup of this stuff, we work on one teaspoon of baking powder. This baking powder is the one that I use. There's other ones out there. Now the thing about this is don't put too much in because it'll make your bread taste horrible. That's two tablespoons. That's my new starter. And I know that about three and a half cups of this stuff goes into one of these jars. Make sure you mix it in as you go so it gets right through the whole mix. We'll do this by hand to start with. At three and a half cups in each jar and four jars, that's four times three and a half is 14 cups. I've got two in there. I want to put another 12 in there, making a total of 14 so far. That's the 14th one there. Going to mix that in a little bit and then let the uh, dough hook do the rest. Nice. Well, we'll leave that for a bit. Sourdough bread is really healthy for a lot of reasons. The first reason this sourdough bread is healthy is because I'm grinding my own milk or rye on the day I'm making it. I'm not buying a bag of flour that's already got oxidation going on inside it. There's no oxidation that goes straight into there. So that's the first reason. Second reason is that any of the sugars uh, they get fermented down, so there's a lot less sugar, and there's also a lot less gluten in it. If you're doing it all with wheat, you can have a higher amount of gluten. If you want to have a gluten-free sourdough bread, then do it with brown rice, and you'll be no gluten at all virtually. Pretty much none, I think. Uh, I can tolerate gluten, but this here is very low gluten anyway, because the fermentation process means it's very, very low, and it won't upset your guts. The other reason that my one is a super bread is because it's got this in it, Chia seeds, which are full of EPA and DHA, the omega-3, and the other one is, it's in this bag down here, and that's flaxseed. Before I put in there though, I'm going to grind it fresh. So my dough hook's doing its job, and this here, also known as linseed, this has got high amounts of DHA and EPA, which will give you uh, resistance to getting, getting Alzheimer's and dementia. It's actually an essential uh, fatty acid omega-3. So we've got to have it, and I'm using a coffee grinder today. I'm going to put one more here because I want to have a fair amount of this in my bread. I'm going to start off with that there. Very, very uh, good for grinding. I don't put it in my mill because it's uh, a little bit hard on the mill, and this is a finer way to get a really good grind. It does a pretty quick job. You can decide how coarse you want it by the amount of time you hold it down. That's um, done pretty fast, as you can see. I can still go a bit more. You can see some of it's uh, not quite ground down, or I could leave it like that and have like more texture in there, like so. I'm probably going to um, leave it though, because I like to have a bit of texture in my bread. I don't want too much, and I'll give it a fraction more. Just a little bit more. There we go. Lovely. Now that there is equivalent to almost a cup of flour. Therefore, we will add another teaspoon of baking powder in there to help it rise. Chia seeds are a superfood, and again, high amounts of omega-3. Sweet. That again is about another cup. So that can go into our mix. Still going. Just want to check the viscosity of this. Oh, that's looking good. Another teaspoon of baking soda in for this as well. We've added another two in total, one for the flax seed and one for the chia seed. We'll carry on with that mixing. Okay. I've heated up the pan while that machine's doing its magic. 
three quarters of a cup of sunflower seeds. I find if I roast them first in the pan, they just taste that much better in the bread than if I put them in like they are. They don't take long to do. Just want to brown them lightly. Don't want to burn them. They start to pop when they're ready to go. Well, they're heady. I'll turn this off and uh, have a look at it. Hmm, looks pretty good. Nice consistency. Yeah, it's excellent. It's just the way I like it. Beautiful. Gonna bring that in. Magic. Right, we'll just let that sit for a bit. It's really good. These guys are already starting to brown on the bottom. By roasting them, it gives it a nice nutty sort of flavour. Put some on before we start the mix up. Like that. Down. Crank them up. Get down, and then the rest of the side. I get everything from bin in, get it in bulk. Uh, and these packets here are great, but this is actually a new one to me, this is a New Zealand pumpkin seed. Uh, I can make my own from pumpkin seeds, which I do have some. That's the ones there, but it takes a long time to get them out of the shell on the outside. These ones are good to go, and it's a New Zealand product, so let's support them. So very rich in vitamin E, vitamin C, and vitamin A. Highly nutritious. You can eat them like roasted like that just as a snack. You can put them all sorts of things, but I like to have them in my bread. Those guys will start popping soon, won't take them too long at all. Yeah, it's starting to go already under the heat. Again, I'm not going to give them too much heat, because I don't want to uh, destroy the nutritional value, but I want to get that nutty flavour come out of it, so we'll start to turn them out. Same motion, just looking to the side like that. Put the ones on the bottom to the top. So you can see on the uh, left hand side of the screen the ones from the bottom come to the top. Not long at all, they've only been there in less than a minute so far. Pumpkin seeds in the mix now, lovely. It's a beautiful machine, it looks like an old tractor or something. The next thing in my bread is this here, goji berries. I'm going to grab a handful of these guys. These guys are just delicious. Very high actually in protein, look at that. Dried out goji berries. Gonna add them to the mix, just slowly. The next thing I want is I want some dried apricots and some dates. There goes me apricots. Now these are organic, most of the stuff in here is organic. I'm not too anal about stuff being organic or not, but it just so happens it is. And it keeps other people happy that I feed, so there we go. Now the dates, the mix. This here has been going for a while, we're taking it off and we're going to take it over here and I've bought these. I've never actually done bread in these before but I thought I'd give it a crack. I think if I wet this here, it's going to be better for taking this stuff out and getting it into the container. Yeah, that works good. It's actually gone pretty well. It's really good. It's going to rise quite a bit, that's one. I have literally scraped the bowl just to fill two of these. I thought I had more, but I don't. What I'm putting in the pan here, guys, is sesame seeds. The okay, car just starting to brown up a little bit now. You can see the one starting to jump out of the pan. Don't want to give these guys too much. It's the uh, plain steak knife. I'm going to go across like this on my bread. That one there, I'll do the same. This one going long ways. That's one done. Pumpkin seeds. These are a different type of seed to the other one. Smaller. Start roasting those. I don't know if you can see in the bread, but you can see the goji berries, the colour, the orange coming through a little bit, the red. There's all different colours in there. It's going to be a really nice loaf, this one. But they're both going to be nice. This, this one's got uh, roasted pumpkin seeds on top. They're only in the pan for like 20 seconds, they're already blacking up just about enough, I think. Maybe spread them out afterwards. Okay, 
That's our two loaves, good to go in the oven. I had already preheated my oven to 250, so it's already hot. This is a new way of doing it for me. There we go. Right. We'll keep an eye on that. And it's really important to keep an eye on things that they don't burn. The last time I've been cooking my bread, I've been doing it on this stuff here, baking paper at least. And I've just been making the bread and mixing it on the bench, making a huge big mess. I don't know what it's going to come out like because I've never cooked in one of those before. I'm not sure what it's going to be, whether it's going to stick to it or not. I don't know. It's a bit of an experiment, but we'll see how it goes in about one hour. We'll come back to it. I reckon it's going to be fine, eh? I gave it extra time because it just didn't look like it was done. I gave it another 15 minutes and I'm going to take it out now and call that quits. How does it sound? It sounds hollow. Not bad, not bad at all, not bad. Overall, not too bad. Mm. Well, straight out of the oven, I think we need to cut one and taste it. This is a bit like cutting a steak, it's a moment of truth, really. You don't know until you cut right into what you're gonna find. Oh, that looks great. Look, it's a winner. If you use this recipe, if you use the same recipe as me, you're gonna love it. It's perfect. Good morning. Came out here this morning after breakfast to make a thumbnail of my bread for the video. We know you want it, don't we? So this morning I had two slices of this. It's all pretty much the same stuff, not for pace. And we've got uh, four loaves. I've cut them in half because being in the tin it was quite dense and I found it wasn't drying enough. By cutting it in half it's actually dried out really good. You can freeze this and then pop it back in the oven just to warm it up a little bit. And it's nice. Because I've got lots of people here, uh, today Hilary and Margaret come back from overseas and I've got my brother Tristan, I've got guests coming this weekend, so this is all going to get eaten, it's going to feed a lot of people. You can toast it, or you can eat it just like this. Mmm. That's going to be my, this is my breakfast this morning. Sweet, nutty. Delicious. That's how that spoil you. Mm. Don't recommend giving your dogs too much bread. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Smash the like button if you did. So now I got this one right. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. And be good, can't be good, be careful. See you later. Want some more, eh? I think you do. Mm -hmm. Uh-uh. Yum. Apricots. Not the patient. Mmm. Okay. Okay, just a little bit. There we go.